Hey guys, Tyrant here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Elst outskirts. Playing for today spawning on the left. But did he finish up playing as Soviet straight away, locking into Shockraft front line? Team out with him is Gardening Lelik. Also playing as Soviets, who has Gov Motor Coordination, Counter Attack, and Soviet Industry. Oh, looks like trying to go for the wire. Oh, is he going to jump in? Tricky, tricky. Uh, facing off against them, we have Eternal. Thanks, OKW, okay, straight away locking into Breakthrough. Teaming up with them is Death Corps, who has German infantry, Jaeger armor, and Assault Support, playing as Elsie. In terms of rankings, this is an all random affair. Uh, Gunning Lalek is ranked 19, and everybody else is uh, in the top 10. Random 2, so a very high ranking affair here for Random 2v2, which is nice. You grenadier squad is ready. Suppose, don't want to cross the road. Trying to hide behind the bushes and make a safe approach. This Lee is coming in from the other side. Oops, okay, stop on the right side of the road. Already been wired off though, so they can't take uh, cover behind that tank there. Some story though, conscripts can't really charge in against the fuselage behind heavy cover. Conscripts do come forwards within the uh, Stempire's range here, so that was a slight mistake from Dirty Finisher. There's some troops coming over to assist now, and going for the Lovnir style here. Conscripts into a uh, double combat engineer. Typically, it does leave you with a little bit more manpower to get an elite squad of infantry. The expense for a little bit of firepower early on. Oh, it's a close call, but the uh, Stempires do make it out of there. Imagine he's closing in. Flamer at the ready. Conscript slowly winning this engagement over here. There's been a very, very slow pace on the other side. So no action at all over there. But now coming across to the center is Death Corps, and with three grandiers, these conscripts are not going to last long. Usually is also getting very, very low. The flame out the front, dishing out the pain. And there they go. Quite late, Eternal with his retreats, pushing it a little bit too far for comfort, I would say. And going for a uh, four Fusilier start here, which is usually quite tough to uh, <laughs> make work, just because the early game performance isn't terribly strong there. Close range firepower, not very high, and uh, not being able to build sandbags, also very costly. So, generally, I'm not a big fan of a uh, Fusilier start like this. Ooh, conscripts, why do they have negative cover right there? Where's the negative cover? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, he's losing in the center there. And uh, starting to lose some control in the north. If you see a nice position there behind the light cover. And uh, conscripts, maybe you could make a push down here. Those are nearby are going to come out, but there's another squad of conscripts hiding back there. Going to be outnumbered. The conscripts dropping very fast, so it looks like they're on negative cover. At least for those first two models drop very, very, very quickly. Oh, and here is a uh, scout car. For gardening, Alec, very, very late timing on this after already going for so many conscripts. And he's on the side of the map with the Aussie player who, you know, does have green ears with the Faust available. So this is a very strange build. Gardening Lalek. Such a late timing to be building the M3. Generally not recommended. Bunker down for Death Corps also has put down tier 2 and 222 in production. 
So yeah, that M3 is going to have a tough time once that 2 2 arrives, and that's why you shouldn't get it this late in the game. The of that, uh, paying itself off at this point. Quite low. Conscript's fighting hard here, and comes a flamer to assist. But at the moment, the allies with some uh, very strong control. Deathcore playing uh, quite a slow pace here with his troops. Not really constantly pushing, just happy to camp in the center. And uh, Eternal is still struggling against these conscripts with and the common energy of the flamethrower. Just the performance of the fuselage is not quite strong enough until they get those weapon upgrades. Made in. Treat and uh, doesn't do any damage. In fact, that's double flames for dirty finisher. That could backfire on him a little bit. Oh, M3 comes in, hits the mine, goes down, takes down a few models inside it at the same time. Two, two, two through the center. Conscripts do have access to the AT grenades. Very, very low though. And, uh, forcing everything away. So, pretty, a couple of nice scalps there for the Axis. Maybe they can find their way back onto the map now. Back up taking down their M3 and forcing away so many units, and they need it. Their map control quite bad. Probably going to lead to some pretty fast T70s for the Allies. I do see Gardening Lout putting down his tier 3 now. Do you finish? Uh, maybe about to do the same? Could do. If he wants to go for a T70, he probably should. 2 on the hunt, might be able to get the wipe. Oh man, doesn't even need to get to the road. Got some really good hits there. Looks like with the uh, cannon on rather than the, with the machine gun. Getting the kill there. Oh, that's a pretty big force there. Tempire's closing in. Some setting up, but the squad sneaks around the corner. The uh, grenade is on cooldown though, so can't do too much damage. And it's going to be a Puma for Eternal. Safe choice. The fact that he spent so many uh, munitions on grenades is no good for his weapon upgrades. It's going to be a long time before these fuselers start to scale effectively because of that. going to be uh, very metered. In your grenade expenditure so you can actually get those weapon upgrades early. Maybe you'll be able to get away with that mini grenade spam when you have good map control but not on this particular match. Conscripts coming around the corner, MG repositioning, we've got the five man green D there as well. It does mean infantry, Should infantry for death core. Oh man, that MG42, so much suppression. But here comes the T-70, 222's got to be careful. Stormtroopers coming out of cover, maybe hoping to catch these guys as they cross the road on retreat. And that gets shut down. Here comes the Puma, looking for the T-70. And connects with one shot. And right now, very, very good map control for the Axis. about to turn things around here. Do have a pack out for death core as well. Playing uh, nice and safe. My dirty finisher has put down the tier 3 but has not gone for a light vehicle so it looks like he's going to be rushing tier 4. Nice 2 2 2. Pack nearby. Pack setting up. Just here he takes one shot. And this amount of health, I think, will die. Ooh. Does not connect, though. Pack nearby also. 2 2 2 coming back in. This is a little bit risky. Okay, there we go. Uraing in. Hoping to get the AT grenade off. But Deathcore getting out of there in the nick of time.
was cool that combat engineer. The allies are regathering the southern fuel. Second pack for Death Gore. Interesting. Makes me think he's maybe going to go straight to battle phase three here. Double packs, you know, only facing up against one T70 is quite unusual at this point in the match. But, you know, if you're expecting to also maybe to be facing a medium in a short amount of time and you want to try go for a tech up to tier four, maybe the second pack makes a little bit of sense. He's already got a pretty strong infantry base here, so doesn't really need more squads that desperately. And maybe he can get a snipe double AT guns. Maybe he can pick off the T70 as well as scale against the mediums later on. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Right here. Those are the kind of grenades that maybe you don't need to throw like against the unit behind heavy cover that's definitely not going to get wiped. Maybe could have got wiped if he tried to chase with these two squads as he crossed the road, but instead looking for some more territory. Ooh, close call on these conscripts. How'd they get so low? Tier 4 is down for duty finisher, by the way. Could uh, consider... Going to T-34 shortly. Yeah, a walking Stuka going to be the option for Eternal, but not up against that many T-weapons at the moment. What is this one machine gun? Might be tough to uh, get some early kills with that. Looks like it ran straight in there. Maybe it took a little bit of small arms damage. Risky business. And Axis now with a lot of map control once again. For the last like four or five minutes, the map control has been so much stronger. This T70 has been uh, well contained by them so far. Here comes a fuel drop. Good time to do it now before the Schwer is up can be activated to try and shoot those down. Those supply planes are very, very vulnerable. As it says right there in the description to getting shot down. So good timing to try and get that fuel drop going. He's got plenty of munitions to utilize it with. But at the moment, without the support of the T-70, it is really struggling. This is a scenario where having a uh, Maxim would really assist you, but Went for tier one, strangely. Stupid Three kills, decent. Two, 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 chasing in. Double packs, not too far behind. Did he pick up yeah another grandier? So four grandiers now. It's a fresh one. Take a look at the KDs. Core. Yeah, look at that. 56 to 16. That's why he's got so much manpower right now. Gunling Glalik on the other side of that. Horrendously bad kills to death ratio. Which is why Deathcore is just able to afford just so many units here. His trades are so efficient. I'm for a sniper now, but that is quite a risky option. 222 is still on the battlefield. D flank here. Could see this machine gun going down. No, he stopped chasing. Just got the more than one control group, eh? <laughs> Could have just left one green here and there, chase down with the other three and look for that wipe. But all right. But yeah, going for the sniper, decent option. But I think he doesn't really have enough to protect this, to stop this from just getting bullied off the battlefield by either the Grenadiers or the 222. Lt gun sitting up on the T-70, the Faust. Luckily one of the pack shots misses, so the T-70 should be able to get out of there alive. So 
Let's deal with only one kill. Conscript's going down fast. Combat is through the center. Very, very low. Here comes the Zis. Looks like maybe he's thinking about setting up. Ooh, no, actually going for the Puma there. This is Barrage. Decent damage. But the ally is getting pushed so far back right here. Gunning Lalic also with a tremendous amount of float. He needs to spend some of that dirty finisher. I think maybe think about trying to go for the uh, KV-8 here. Just about there. Needs a tiny bit more fuel. Nearly there. So that explains his build, but I'm still not sure about Gardling Lalic. It's a good move here. Unit inside the building, spotting for the sniper. Gets a couple nice kills there. Quite slow to appear up. There's 222, and also quite strange, does end up going for a Panzer IV. Look how late this is though, could have had this out a very, very long time ago. Kind of strange to go for it now. But still, we'll be able to do some damage, especially against Gunning Lalic on his side of the map. But actually, he has decided to go for an SU-76. Very strange. He's so high on manpower. Even just side-ticking, getting a Zis. Could be an option. Also, still got some fuel in his base that he hasn't picked up yet. The enemy is taking our territory. Now he's on the back foot in a big way. And here comes Deathcore's Blob once again. T70 back there. No trouble shooting past the sandbag. Sniper. Oh, taking a little bit of damage. He has to retreat it. This is what I was talking about. Doesn't really have enough units to just keep the sniper safe and utilize it effectively here. Here comes the SU-76, also the KV-8 as predicted. Did he finish also going for a second AT gun to help uh, protect the KV. Which will be helpful against the Panzer IV. It does leave him somewhat exposed to the walking Stuka. Oh, B-4 hits a mine. SU-76 nearby could go in for the kill and KV-8 getting aggressive here. Puma taking some uh, shots on the rear armor. Oh, Faust the building instead of the tank. Big misclick there from Deathcore. And SU-76 gets the kill. P4 down and there we go. Just like that the game has turned on its head. And uh, now the <laughs> Soviets are starting to get some uh, work done here. Switching over to the pea shooter, the 45mm gun. And some nice damage onto the Puma. It's pretty much... Best at fighting. Centenary artillery. Got number 2v1. The costume's doing a good job holding the airline. Oh, man, why did he retreat there? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, but he switched back to the flamer. Might have been able to get the kill there. Looks like that was one shot away from death. Do you finish or lose a combat engineer, maybe? No, one of his AT guns goes down in the center. That's what it was. Stormtroopers, but now Stormtroopers in some trouble. Oh, the Flamer. Had to reload. Looking for some more kills on these green deers. They're very, very low here. Uh, Own vehicles tend not to be the best at going for those chasing wipes. Against more stationary targets. Here comes a walking Stuka. A T gun could be in trouble here. 222 goes down. Oh, and the A T gun does get decrewed. Two conscripts nearby for the recrew though, so easy to regather that. And send your artillery dropped. Back in a bit of trouble. There we go. Devil A T gun should be able to get out of here. Conscripts surprised they're not going for the capture here. Going for it now, Puma gets one shot in. Looking for the kill. 
Okay, another Panzer IV for Deathcore. But he's going to have a harder time having lost one of his AT guns in the first Panzer IV. All of a sudden, Gardening Lalek in a good position somehow, and he's still floating. Close to 1,400 manpower. It's a travesty. So you need to do some nice work here. A little bit risky using a pack at this low amount of health. I would not suggest it. Oh, squad went down very, very quickly. And dodged the uh, grenades. Oh boy. It's near off, but the pack is there to defend the retreat path. <laughs> Shots. Comes another supply plane. Wow, strange option here. Eternal goes for the battle group as well. It's going to delay his tanks even further. Interesting. Is he going to go for the King Tiger or the Yak Tiger? That's the big question. T-Gun did get decrewed, but recaptured quite quickly. And here comes the Puma, backed up with the pack. Is this the end? No, pack actually going for the T-70. Does not connect, and the Puma doesn't want to chase. If the pack had uh, shot at this, he probably would have gone in for the kill on it with the Puma there, so... Slight mistargeting, but this is randoms. Kind of communication is just not there. Double AT gun still in the battlefield. Or oh, duty finish a little bit risky. That amount of health as well. And here we go. KV2 coming in for gardening Lalek. Finally. Got his tech down and got that out. Spend um, a good chunk of his flight too rebuilding some of these conscripts. Okay. Moderate, moderate. Come to meet one now. 18 kills actually. Maybe we got a few more than I thought. It's quite a lot of corpses. Looks like at least six models here. Roasting away. Can be two also there. Good pressure in the north though. Is forcing the way forwards. The Allies very, very long VPs. Important to note that. Which is why you're seeing this kind of uh, aggressive capping here from Gardening Relic. Is that a unit inside that building? I think a Grandia might have been in there, and now it's not. KV2 flattens it inside. grenade there from the conscripts. We've got a Raketan finally. For Eternal. Oh, AT gun gets decrewed. KV2 on the chase down. And I, I feel like Deathcore is just a little bit too aggressive with this pack. So with the, with them on low health and ultimately losing another one here. And that big loot lead that the Axis had for a while there. Seems to have uh, vanished with the arrival of the KV-2. Yeah, it's about to get even worse, because here comes the IS-2. Two not still about 80 fuel away from his big boy. And even then, this isn't like one of the best maps for the Tiger either. Relatively wide front. Oh, double wipe there. Huge play from Eternal. Two conscript squads down now, close to full, both of them. That was a monster. It had 18 kills before. Now it's got 30. Incredible. 
sure I'm not connecting there. Maybe two coming through the center. Four repaired. Yep, KV with the uh, engine critical, but maybe not a situation to try and dive onto its rear. Connecting. No snare on the last two there. That, okay, here it comes. Boomer nearby, but so are the double AT guns. Now, uh, Axis. Have to lose control of the center. Oh, that's quite a lot of damage onto the P4. And the P4 just cannot handle the KV2. It's got good penetration, so much damage. A lot of armor as well. Has arrived. And it is struggling right now. Even the Stug, I don't think, is particularly good against it. Gonna need that Yag Tiger. Looks like Death Boy has gone for uh, double AT guns now. And those are both fresh ones. So that's a tremendous amount of manpower that he invested. Stuka in, he's got the flare up from the Fusiliers, which is nice to see, and another good connection. Turnal making really good use of that Vet 2 now, 38 kills. Got a few repair stations out the back for gardening Lalek now. And now uh, going for a Katusha. A little bit risky at the moment. Uh, if he does get flanked by some aggressive makes his tank play. He's a little bit vulnerable. Oh, this could be bad news for these conscripts coming through for the snare. So many units into their retreat path. I think they're going to go down. Stormtroopers spring the ambush. And there they go. A little bit clumsy there from Gardening Lalic. Deathcore taking up now, battle phase three. We have 300 points remaining. Oh, that's a mine. In fact, there are a lot of mines up here for gunning Lalek. Good to see. KB2 locking down the center at the moment. Not too bad yet, doesn't have uh, the range bonus. So it gets that the vet too. It'll be a real nightmare. Looks like a crawler setting up another mine there, perhaps. Oh, sniper in some trouble. Fusiliers crossing the road. This is risky. Trying to soft retreat. Oh, and it goes down. Big misplay from Gunning Lalek there. He had such a long time to hit retreat. And continue to try and soft retreat. That was greedy. Paid the ultimate price. Under Charging forwards. Before trading blows with the Zis. What's that mine? Most of them have been uh, defused by stepping off. Oh, 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 oh. Reload. We're now going for the machine guns. Double packs through the center. Both hit V1 with that. Oh, and there's a Yag Tiger. That's a big shot. KV in some trouble. But they can very easily just retreat back to these repair stations. It's making it very easy for the Allies. It's not making it easy. They're draining out here down to 39. Need to make some big plays, so in comes the KV. Oh, and he takes the Puma down right there. A the smoke in the way. Going for the capture. Let's do the capture, but in come more troops. More allied troops into the center. Capping in the north, allies down to 32 now. 
corpses down there. Is that the, uh, that was his Rakitin, right? His Rakitin's gone. Oh, IS-2 coming in, hoping to catch the Yagtiger on the rear armor. P4 double packs are there. Takes a, uh, mighty walloping, but in comes the Katusha. Going for the exposed packs. And that's double Katusha, in fact, from Gardening Lalak. D's cruise one. No one managing to escape, however. It's there, free with the five man upgrade. Oh, big connection. And as I said, with these repair stations taking damage like that, just not as costly as it normally is. Machine gun getting destroyed there. by Yag Tiger mobilizing. He's got the speed bonus from the engine upgrade. Oh, and connects nicely. KV considering going in for the kill though. Walking Stuka coming so far forwards there has to be a misclick. This could be a horrible error. Luckily nothing connects with it. S35 doesn't spot it. Going in uh, for the kill. Puma using the aim shot. Will it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Still gets the killing blow off. But so does the Yag Tiger. KV8 abandoned. So I'd say overall it's a pretty bad trade, KV8. For Puma, but. At least Eternal able to salvage something out of that situation. Oh, the Yag Tiger dishing out the pain. Oh, you must have been in range for the snare. Yep, there it goes. Egg Tiger stopped chasing though, not going to be in range. Switching targets over to the SU-85, another snare here could be the end of that. But he's pulling back with the Yag Tiger, why? Oh and he misses. He misses, maybe if he was closer range that shot would have hit. SU-85 probably going to be able to limp home from there. Uh, Eternal, a little bit too timid with his Yag Tiger. Oh man, gun crit. He's got the uh, Fusiliers, you know, they've got the Enhanced Line of Sight thanks to the G43 package. And, uh, opportunity gone begging, maybe could have killed both this and this. He played his cards right. But, you know, the Allies don't have Mark Vehicle or some big hammer to really deal with the Yag Tiger, so it could be an issue for them. Across the map. Double Katusha's moving into position. What are we off? Six and three. Uh, not, not super impressive. Stormtroopers. Might get the kill. Oh. Panther coming forwards. Oh man. Does he see it? Katusha's so nearby. So close. Killed one of them very easily there. Must have been just on the edge of his sight. Here comes the KV. Katusha targeting the pack. Pack on the move. Panther and KV trading head to head. The KV is just very, very strong even in these head to head encounters because even if it fails to penetrate, it's still got the deflection damage. That definitely accounts. Okay, nice to back up to full strength. Tiger nearby though. Ooh. See a T gun nearly gets the D crew. The 
Still 32 VPs left for the Allies. Gotta be careful here. Tiger not quite in position to uh, get any damage on these tanks. Maybe on the Allies too now. Oh, that's T-70. Gets him neutralize. some attack rounds with the uh, Panzer IV. Oh, whoa! Eternal managing to uh, crew that abandoned KV-8. Okay, that's, that could be scary. Run and blow the eyes. Don't even have that much infantry, however. Okay, Tiger pushing very far forwards through the center, doing a lot of damage to the IS-2. Oh, yeah, Tiger missing that shot. T-34 going in for the ram, but What's the follow-up? There's nothing. They're coming around the corner. A little bit low now. There's a bit more waste of a tank there. Losing T-34 going for a ram like that. There's just no follow-up. Kind of pointless. He goes down a retreat to the flames. s 5 getting tamed. That Yag Tiger doing some nice work so far. Aim are coming out to the flank. Is he on hold fire? What? Oh, is this bugged? Is this bugged because it got a main gun crit? We've got a bandit. So far, I haven't seen the main gun fire. Oh, it seems to be bugged. Did it have a main gun crit when it died? I'm not 100% sure. Oh, yeah. But either way, the KV... Did we see a flame in the center at all? can't even remember now. But yeah, if it, uh, if it only has the machine gun on there, it's... It's not terribly impressive. KV spitting out some long range damage. Shock troops. 46 VPs left for the Axis, 32 for the Allies. Coming right down to the wire here. T34 gonna escape. Oh man, and it wipes the Grenadiers on retreat as well. Super long range. That is a heartbreaker for Death Corps. Oh. There's a bit of a diversion here. Since it seems to be uh, not functioning correctly. Let's do garage. Oh, and Yag Tiger. Three five on the run. Oh, here's a broom beer. You don't really want to go head to head with the KV with the broom beer, especially now that it's got the uh, vetted up range bonus. I I do think that the KV getting a range bonus on his main gun is a mistake. Should get 50 range. Oh, IS-2 coming in on the rear. Connecting. Mass Katushas into the center trying to block the capture. IS-2 still looking for the flank. SUA-5 coming in. It's low. I'm hoping to get some rear armor shots in here. IS-2 pulling back. And SU-85 going to take an AT grenade, going to go down here. Yeah, it's gone. A lot of low health tanks up here. T-70 trying to take care of the pack, but goes down to the super low P-4 back there. Everything low on health for Death Corps. He's getting desperate here. Both teams are. Roombi even doing some nice damage. In comes the T-34. Going to look for the killing blow on that. Going for the ram, probably not necessary. It doesn't penetrate. Maybe a bit of a waste of a tank there. We're going for the cap now with the smoke down. KV, close range, just nasty damage. Death Course tank still alive, very, very low. 
looks like a what's that? is that the KV? Is that, no, it's another T-34. It's dead. And they're coming down to dual EIS-2. To finish it with no more AT guns to his name. They're all destroyed. Panther trying to circle around, trying to avoid the KV here with the blitz on. But the KV is just too strong. Making mincemeat out of Panther. Big Tiger though, connecting nicely. T-34, this could be his moment. Could do some A-level heroics here. Dueling the IS-2. Drain on the Axis right now. The ship's going to get the snare off. Concussive grenade stunning his own troops there. Big mistake from Eternal. And, the, and uh, IS-2 dueling. IS-2's uh, got that VIC-2 range bonus itself, so... Pretty good at long range. Okay, here come double T-34s, clearing the center. We have Tiger on the run, very low in health. Nothing to repair. Oh, big connection, T-34 down. Okay. A little bit of drain onto the allies, down to 15 VPs now. High explosive barrage into the center from the Yag Tiger. Not really connecting, ice two out the back for repairs. Maybe could even just back across to his teammates. Uh, the pier stations might be faster than trying to wait for his own uh, combat engineers. Then he can use those combat engineers to cap as well. Very important in this uh, low VP scenario. Allies did capture the center, but in come the Axis. E4 there to back them up. T-34, oh, conscript's very low. Double P-4s. Points are neutralized, 25 VPs left. For the Axis, 15 for the Allies. Who's going to win this? Allies making a play for this VP. Shock troops with the light cover, though, perform pretty well. And dodging that grenade very effectively. In comes another squad of Fusiliers, but we got another squad of shock troops out the back. This is where the Yag Tiger is not much help. Oh, he's not repairing up the Panther. This is risky. Yag Tiger coming in for some damage with the uh, machine gun. Doing a little bit. And it looks like the KV-2 clearing up the Axis from the center. The drain is on the Allies. I mean, not on the Axis, rather. Now two points to zero. This could be the winning maneuver here. Junpai is charging in now. Here come the double P4s to the south. Gonna clear out these shock troops. Nine VPs left though. I don't think they can do it in time. Kachush is on to this point now as well. Oh, and the Pyos go down. That's going to be it. Axis is not going to be any done now. Oh, this is uh, just for theatrics. And there we go. Well, uh, it was a medium game, I'll say. That gun and Lalek floating, oh man, close to 1600 manpower at one stage. Just a horrendous early game from him. But uh, Deathcore throwing quite a few units there. A bit too reckless with his packs by and large. He had such a huge force and man, it, he lost all of his squads. Uh, some quite bad preservation from him. Also, uh, a bit confusing with his build order, still going for a Panzer IV, like, kind of missing the timing by about two or three minutes there. It was also rather strange, I thought he was going straight up to tier four, but no, go for Panzer IVs instead. But yeah, a uh, solid play by a Dirty Finisher and Eternal. He, he got off to a rip-roaring start with that walking Stuka, got up to 30 kills super quickly, which is uh, impressive. The Yag Tiger did some good work as well, but just couldn't keep it healthy and relevant uh, in the late game. But yeah, VF4 on that already.
wasn't on the battlefield for that long and did a lot of damage. Very impressive performance from that. But maybe could have killed the SU-85 on the last two down here earlier. And maybe that could have been the game deciding uh, decision. We'll wrap on that, guys. Let me know uh, about the microphone here. Still tweaking the settings on the new mic. From my, uh, you know, I did obviously do some testing before this, but it did uh, look to be maybe a little bit loud. What I can see on the levels here, so let me know. And uh, if you like a game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.